Alright everyone, today we are looking at De Fiancé, which is a French romantic comedy about a guy that's not quite sure that he wants to get married anymore. Either that or an MMORPG shooter for the consoles and PC recently released. And this would be my avatar, Christy Douglas, a dead live reference for those who don't know. Now apparently one of the things about this game is that it's been... I wouldn't say co-developed, but it's in sync with the TV series of the same name, um, which is a sci-fi production, and stuff that affects the game will affect the series, and stuff that happens in the series will also affect the game. So, since I don't watch TV, that particular piece of trivia is kind of pointless, but, you know, I just thought I'd just kind of bring you up to date on how it is. So here we are, it's set out as your standard third-person uh, shooter. And plays very much like one as well. Um, there's enemies have got health bars. You can see how much health they've got while you're shooting them. You've got stores littered, littered around the place like these. And I've picked the, the Outlaw class because generally I like the uniform. You do get the choice of uh, what race you want to be and you've got all your standard MMO options such as uh, changing your hairstyle, your hair colour, what you had for breakfast, that kind of shit. Now this game has been compared to Borderlands quite a bit, and you know, there are de definitely some similarities. You've got an angel in your head, which is uh, your ego. And like, this, this is all my equipment here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set myself up for the next mission by treating myself to a new, a new skill. Now as you can see, there's a whole lot of these uh, skills here still locked. And I'm unsure if you've got to like level up to get your hands on them, or if you've got to go through a path, like uh, unlocking one skill will allow you to see what's in the square surrounding it. And since I couldn't see anything that I actually wanted to buy, I just powered up one of my current skills and got an achievement. So hooray for me! Now this post-apocalyptic version of San Francisco is fairly large. Um, so in traditional MMORPG fashion, it's not long before you're able to get your hands on a mount, just to cut down on the amount of time that you'll spend hoofing it between one area and the next. There's also fast travel systems, although I've only got one so far, and uh, it's just back at the human base. And, uh, holy shit, the frame rate is taking a massive dive here. This isn't a recording problem, this actually happened uh, while I was playing. And now it sucks itself out, and we're going for a ride. Alright, enough Marvel vs. Capcom music. Let's go and talk to this guy, because he looks big and strong and probably knows what he's doing. Unlike me. Glad you could make it. I don't know what these raiders are doing here, but listen to what I tell you, because I don't say it lightly. There are civilians in there. Some of them are my employees. Some of them my friends. Kids, even. But their lives are secondary to securing that Arc core. Even your bosses. You understand? No matter what, we can't let the core leave that compound. No time to ride the line, so let's go! So if I'm reading this correctly, he just authorised the slaughter of everyone in there as long as we get that core back. I like this guy. Those are some orders that I can follow. He's also got a completely banging hat. So here's how the action usually plays out. Um, you've got your own, you've got a standard collection of guns. Um, you can loot from enemies' corpses in order to get better ones. They tend to drop nice shit when they get killed. And right now we're taking out all the psychos from Borderlands by the looks of it. So as you can see, I've got an assault rifle here that also sets people on fire when they get shot. Which basically means that they not only suffer heavy impact uh, wounds to their face from the bullets themselves, they are then lightly cooked alive from the inside. So, oh, it's a nice gun. Everything. 
Now you'll see this happen quite a lot in the 360 version. You see that subtitle at the bottom down there? It takes about 10 seconds for the voice to actually kick in. See it there? It's not exactly a game killer, but uh, you do get the feeling that there's a lot of stuff that's meant to be streaming in a bit more smoothly than this. Would probably be fine on the PC, but uh, the 360 takes a while to... This is despite the fact that the game has to be installed, and... Anyone who's familiar with MMOs will also re uh, recognise that you've got to patch the game um, before you start, there's always a patcher that comes up, and so you've got to download quite a few files before you're actually allowed to play. It's not a big deal, it's just something that bears mentioning. Now you may have noticed that my gun's glowing here, um, it's basically just a skill that I chose at the start of the game. And this one just ups your damage. Nice and simple, but uh, gets the job done. You can also choose to throw out a decoy. You can cloak yourself and become invisible. Or you can move it... I don't know, I think it's 50-30% faster. Uh, so that would allow you to strafe more easily. I tried the cloak, didn't have much luck with it, so I decided to swap over to this, and people have been dying by the bucket load at my glowing vengeful hands. You'll also have noticed that I died a moment ago. Um, if you die, you get the option to resurrect yourself, or if someone's nearby they can do it for you. If you die twice in a row quickly, you'll have to respawn at a spawn point, and you'll lose a certain amount of the money that you've collected so far. Nothing particularly groundbreaking, it's kind of standard MMORPG stuff. Um, you can die incredibly quickly in the game. Another Borderlands thing is that you pick up shields. Like, your out the outfit that you're wearing here has no bearing on your actual abilities, or your statistics. It's just for show as far as I'm aware, and you collect a sh uh, different powered shields and different powered uh, grenades. And those are what help keep you alive when the shit hits the fan. I'd be surprised if you hadn't figured this out by now, but it's got the standard shield and health mechanic uh, from most FPS games on the market nowadays. Basically, if your shield breaks, you stop taking damage in your health, and all you've got to do to start healing them both is duck behind cover for a short while and recover. And that exclamation mark over there means that my buddy has been downed, and he's getting barbecued from a Molotov cocktail that the bad guys have thrown. Better him than me. So, I mean, to be honest, I'm actually having a fair amount of fun with the game, despite the fact that it's really rough and uh, unpolished in a lot of ways. It does remind me of uh, earlier times when, you know, not everything had to be triple A uh, production values, and chances are reviews are going to come along and just rip the piss out of this game. You know, they're going to tear it to shreds. Because, I mean, it doesn't have beautiful graphics. It doesn't have triple A production values by the looks of it. But it's just, uh... An MMORPG shooter that does the job reasonably well, I think. I mean, there's currently no subscription to the game. Um, you don't have to pay per month to play. It's all done to do with uh, microtransactions. I'll show you those later on. And 
there's a season pass as well, so I'm assuming that any reasonable chunk of content, you would have to pay for those as well. And as you can see, it's also got uh, semi-boss type of cartels that are extremely resilient to being shot in the face in certain fire, like this guy here, Mega. I'd assume that he's not anything like a fully-fledged boss would be like. Um, there has been one dungeon type of area in the game that I've come across so far. Probably going to be a few more of those. And now that everyone's cleared, I can go into this barn via the window on the side here, because... Uh, um, I was trying to get to that enemy on the radar and it turned out it was a pig. And then I run about this guy until the script and finally kicks in and it's mission over. I was actually convinced that this was a bug and I would have to restart the mission, but uh, thankfully it just took a bit longer than expected to kick in. Don't move. Now drop the core. Don't do it. You will die. I promise. Goddamn raiders. Always do the opposite you tell them. What the hell was that? Who's crazy enough to ambush a lawkeeper's ranch? Raiders. But it's unlike them to be so bold. It's not safe here. I'm taking you to Arashandu's place. Hold on, are you talking about Votanis Collective's Arashandu? We can't bring them into this. They'll take the core for themselves. No way. No goddamn way. She's no longer with the VC. Besides, you don't have a choice. The core's coming with me. You want to accompany it? Then great. Fine. But my Ark Hunter is meeting us there. I'm not going alone. I trust them more than you anyway. So, we finished that mission. And uh, we've got some new clothes for doing so, so I'm going to check that out just in a moment. Hopefully I've got an amazing hat like that guy did. Little cowboy hat. Uh, I think that would suit my character just too sweet. That's what I bought earlier at the shop. That's the one I just got and it looks nothing like the guy's cowboy hat. I feel gypped. That's the one I just unlocked. Looks a lot like Vanessa Luce's costume from Virtua R5. So it's not bad, but uh, in all honesty, I kind of still prefer the bandit outfit. Up to this point, I have found nothing that's be uh, better looking than it. Of course, if you're uh, if you're impatient or you just really fancy spending some real li uh, life money, you can go to the Defiant store and. There's a lot of things you can buy. You can buy uh, X XP boosters so that you get more XP for killing enemies. Um, probably the only stuff that I would be interested in would be these uh, vanity items, costumes. And to be honest, I wouldn't be paying real money for them. That one looks kinda cool. Makes you look like the courier from Fallout, New Vegas. And this one, if that isn't inspired by Mass Effect Commander Shepard costume and uh, seven armor, then I'd be very surprised. So, I mean, these look nice, but only the kind of people that would buy um, gear for their avatar would buy them, I would imagine. Or people who want to say, uh, support the game, they're really enjoying it. They might do that just to send some money to the developers' way. So, I mean, if we were to check out how much the actual cost of these items is in real life... And um, we'll go up in a second. Yeah. Basically, one Microsoft point equals one bit. You get a discount for buying more of them, but... It's expensive stuff for... For what you're getting, you know. That's me feeling to climb a ladder. And that's me somehow jumping up the entire length of a ladder. So basically, we've come to the end of this quick look here. I'm enjoying it so far. I might make another video later on once I've got some decent stuff and come across some more interesting missions. But, uh... 
You know, it's an MMORPG on your Xbox. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription, so... You're not exactly spoiled for choice. Unless you're uh, thinking about the PC version. In which case, you are absolutely spoiled for choice out your backside. But still, it's fun enough. Um, I'm having a decent time with it. And, yeah. I guess that'll do for now, so I'm going to wrap up this video. Take care, everyone, and... Uh, adios.